Okay, this is an election worker who was targeted by Trump's uh, fraud allegations, testifying to the kind of threats that she received. Her name's uh, Shea Freeman Moss, and her mom, whose name you may know, is Ruby Freeman, and they were put through living hell. My name is Ruby Freeman. I've always believed that when God says that he'll make your name great, but this is not the way it was supposed to be. I could have never imagined the events that followed the presidential election 2020. For my entire professional life, I was Lady Ruby. My community in Georgia, where I was born and lived my whole life, knew me as Lady Ruby. I built my own business around that name, La Ruby's Unique Treasures a pop-up shop catering to ladies with unique fashions. I wore a shirt that proudly proclaimed that I was, and I am, Lady Ruby. Actually, I had that shirt on. I had that shirt in every color. I wore that shirt on Election Day 2020. I haven't worn it since, and I'll never wear it again. Now I won't even introduce myself by my name anymore. I get nervous when I bump into someone I know in the grocery store who says my name. I'm worried about who's listening. I get nervous when I have to give my name for food orders. I'm always concerned of who's around me. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation I've lost my sense of security, all because a group of people starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay, to push their own lies about how the presidential election was stolen. Ms. Moss, how has this experience of being targeted by the former president and his allies affected your life? It's turned my life upside down. Um, I no longer give out my business card. I don't transfer calls. I um, I don't want anyone knowing my name. I don't want to go anywhere with my mom because she might yell my name out over the grocery aisle or something. I don't go to the grocery store at all. I haven't been anywhere um, at all. I've gained about 60 pounds. I just don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess everything that I do. Um, It's affecting my life in in a major way. In every way, all because of lies. For me doing my job, same thing I've been doing forever. Your mother also told the select committee about how she had to leave her own home for her safety and go into hiding after the FBI told her that it would not be safe for her there before January 6th and until the inauguration. Let's listen to a clip of her story in her own words. Around the week of January 6th, the FBI informed me that I needed to leave my home for safety. Um, And I left my home for safety around that time. Understood. How, how long did you stay out? Did you, you know, remain outside of your home for your own safety? I, I stayed away from my home for approximately two months. It was horrible. I felt homeless. I felt, you know, I can't believe, I can't believe this person has caused this much damage to me and my family um, to have to leave my home that I've lived there for 21 years. And, you know, I'm having to have my neighbors watch out for me, you know, um, and I have to go and stay with somebody. It was hard. It was horrible. 
And that um, your conversation with the FBI about needing to leave your home for your, your own safety or perhaps recommending it. Um, do you remember, was there a specific threat that prompted that, or was it the accumulation of, of threats that you had received? What prompted it was um, was getting ready to January 6th was about to come. And they did not want me to be at home because of all the threats and everything that I had gotten. They didn't want me to be there in fear of, you know, the people would come into my home. And I had a lot of that. So they didn't want me to be there just in case something happened. I asked, how long am I going to have to be at home? They said, at least until the inauguration. Ms. Moss, I understand that people once uh, showed up at your grandmother's house. Uh, tell us about that experience. Um, I received a call from my grandmother. This woman is my everything. I've never even heard her or seen her cry ever in my life. And um, she called me screaming at the top of her lungs like Shay, Shay, oh my God, Shay, just freaking me out saying that um, there were people at her home and they, um, you know, they knocked on the door and of course she opened it and was seeing who was there, who it was, and they just started pushing their way through, claiming that they were coming in to make a citizen's arrest they needed to find me and my mom. They knew we were there. Um, and she was just like, screaming and, and didn't know what to do. And I wasn't there. So, you know, I just felt so helpless and so horrible for her. And she um, was just screaming. I told her to close the door. Don't open the door for, for anyone. And... Um, you know, she's a 70-something, I won't say, year old woman, and she she doesn't like having restrictions. She wants to answer the door. She likes to get her steps in, walking around the neighborhood, and I had to tell her, like, you can't do that. You, you have to be safe. Um, you know, she would tell me that at night um, people would just continuously send pizzas over and over to her home, um, you know, and they were expecting her to pay for these large amounts of pizzas, and, mm. and she went through a lot that she didn't um, have to, and once again, it, it made me just feel so horrible. In addition to the personal impact this experience has had on you and your family, one of the things that I find most disturbing is how these lies discourage longtime election workers from continuing to do this important work. Yeah, you think? I, I can't believe it. I mean, I knew about her mom. I knew her mom was harassed. We, we understood that her mom was uh, facing death threats, etc., for a doctored video that Rudy Giuliani put out and a lie that he told about Ruby Freeman smuggling in ballots or shoving them through the machines three and four times, right? Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.